say he is a broken hearted say he loves us all the same He came to take us out of the darkness Can someone please tell me his name He's the great I am Hey, Shalom, brothers and sisters. This is Brother Quidash from One Nation, One Power. And I'm coming to you again with another lesson. This time I'm going to go into a detailed lesson. And uh, first and foremost, I want to give all praises and honor to the Most High, Ahaya, which is the Heavenly Father, and Yeshaya, which is the which is who people call Jesus Christ. And the Ruach Kodesh, which is the Holy Spirit in Hebrew. And I'm uh, coming out with this lesson. It's, and it's going to be called the, um, the Mark of the Most High and the Mark of Satan. Okay, I'm going to go into this detailed lesson. <clears throat> You're going to need a, a strong coordinates for this one. Or you can go on um, your computer and get the um it's called eSword you could download that load that download that app excuse me and what it does it breaks down um it has the strongest concordance in it and it breaks down every word in the bible okay <clears throat> or if you have this book this uh the new strong's uh, concordance okay of the bible if you have this book <laughs> Uh, it breaks down every word. It's like the dictionary for the Bible. And it breaks down every word from the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament was trans translated from the Hebrew, and the New Testament was translated from the Greek into English. Both of them. Okay. So we're going to get a couple words out of the Hebrew and the Greek for this lesson. Okay, and um, <clears throat> I'm probably going to put uh, I'll put the uh, the numbers on the screen for these words that I'm going to break down. Okay, just some of them. I'm not going to do all of them. Okay, but the foundation, I'm going to do the foundational uh, words that we're going to go over. I'm going to put them on the screen. All right, so. You're going to need the Hebrew. We're going to break it down. All right. This is very important. This lesson. So this lesson is the mark of the most high and the mark of Satan. Okay. You're going to figure out which one you have today. Okay. Because we know that there is a mark of the beast physically, but we got to go into the spiritual also. All right. So now we're going to go into the Hebrew. Okay. And this is Hebrew number 226, which is sign, S-I-G-N. We're going to go into the word sign. And the Hebrew number, again, is 226. And that gives you the words for the words that they give is mark or sign or token. Okay, so when we go into, when it says, that when the Bible refers to sign in the Old Testament, it also can refer to a mark, it also can refer to a token or a sign, all right? You know, go into your e-sword and you'll see it. The next word we're going to go into is the word hand in the Hebrew. And it's uh, number 3027. And when you go on your e-sword, okay, go on your e-sword, it's going to give you left hand. All right? Left hand. All right? So now the next word we're going to go into is frontlets, which is the Hebrew number 2903 which represents, when you hear the word frontlets, uh, it means forehead, forehead, okay? So now, we went over the word sign, hand, and frontlets. 
Again, frontlet means forehead. When you, when you look at the word hand in the Hebrew, it means left hand. And now sign, which means mark, sign, or token in the Hebrew. Okay? So we're going to go into some scriptures to figure out if you have the mark of the Most High or you have the mark of Satan. All right. <clears throat> so now, our first scripture we're going to go into. We're going to go into Deuteronomy chapter 6. So follow me. All right. And we're going to, uh, let me first get Isaiah for the babies out there. The people that I don't know about this scripture Isaiah chapter 28 and we're going to read 9 through 8 Isaiah 28 9 through 8 this is how you supposed to read the Bible it says whom shall he teach knowledge question mark and whom shall he make to understand doctrine so this is how the Most High gives you to understand his doctrine. Okay. Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. So you have to be, you can't be a baby no more to understand this Bible. Okay. Now verse 10, this is how you're supposed to break down the Bible. And I'm going to give you, in today's lesson, is going to give you the perfect example. It says, for precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept, <clears throat> line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Okay. <clears throat> precept upon precept is basically saying witness upon witness. Okay. So if I get a scripture in Deuteronomy, I should have a scripture that says the same thing that 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 says the same thing about it gets two scriptures in two two different chapters that say the same thing. Okay? That's what precept upon precept is. So for example, if it says thou shalt not honor thy father and mother in Exodus, I should be able to find that in the book of Deuteronomy. Thou shalt not, thou shalt honor thy father and thy mother. Those are two witnesses. Those are two scriptures which are called precepts that line up. So I should give you, you know, two or three witnesses. So when you present the Bible, okay, because in Christianity, they only give you one scripture. But now since, you know, we're learning, you should be able to get about three or four witnesses. For each scripture but all you need is two or three all right so now let's go to the book let's start our lesson let's go to the book of deuteronomy deuteronomy chapter six and remember remember those uh those hebrew words that we broke down just a minute ago so now we're going to go to deuteronomy chapter six and we're going to read one through two <clears throat> and it reads now these are the commandments the statutes and the judgments which the lord your god command to you or to teach you that ye might do them in the land whether ye go to possess it so now it's talking about the commandments and we should do them or uh in the land if we go to possess it okay verse 2 that thou mightest fear the lord thy god to keep all his statutes and his commandments which i command thee thou and thy sons and thy sons sons all the days of thy life and that thy days may be prolonged okay so the most high is commanding us to keep the commandments of god which are the ten commandments Okay, there's other commandments in the Bible, but we're going to focus on the Ten Commandments. 
and then we should teach them to our sons and our sons will teach them to our son their sons and so on and so forth he's commanding us to do that all right now we're going to jump to the same we're going to stay in the same chapter we're going to we're going to jump to verse five verse five verse five and thou shalt love the lord thy god with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might and these words <clears throat> which i command thee this day shall be in thy heart talking about the commandments okay we had to teach them to our son sons okay verse seven and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shall talk to them when thou sittest in thy house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou layest down and when thou risest up okay and i like this scripture right here because we in my family we walk in this scripture when we sit down with our children okay to eat or watch tv or whatever we're doing that gives us time to talk about the commandments of god the sabbath day you know honoring your father and mother that should not bear false witness okay <clears throat> all right now verse 8 and thou shalt bind them for a sign talking about the commandments thou shalt bind them talking about the commandments for a sign okay upon thy hand so you have a spiritual sign upon your hand okay which is your left hand all right and they shall be as frontlets remember frontlets represents forehead between thy eyes okay so when you keep the commandments of god and you teach your children you have a spiritual sign okay let me read that again verse 8 and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand and they shall be as frontlets upon thy eyes all right so you so this is a sign so if you're keeping the commandments of god you're honoring your father or mother you're keeping the sabbath day holy okay you have a spiritual sign on you from the most high all right so now let's go to some more scriptures to keep on confirming this remember precept must be upon precept so now let's go to deuteronomy chapter 11 Deuteronomy chapter 11 and we're going to read verse 1 <clears throat> and it reads therefore thou shalt love the Lord thy God and keep his charge and his statutes and his judgments and his commandments always now you know it's referring to the same thing we have to keep the commandments of God all right now we're going to jump down to verse 13 in the same chapter and it shall come to pass if ye shall hearken diligently unto my commandments which i command you this day to love the lord thy god your god and to serve him with your with all your heart and with all your soul again we have to keep the commandments we just read the context now we're reading in the middle of the chapter it's saying the same thing okay we're going to jump down to verse 18. Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart. What words? The commandments of God in, in, the, in the context. All right. In and in your soul. So we got to lay up the commandments in our hearts and in our soul. And bind them for a sign upon your hand. Okay bind them upon bind them for a sign upon your hand remember we just went over the definitions so this is a spiritual mark you're binding them for a sign from the most high okay that they might be as frontlets between your eyes so you may be able to see so once because once you keep the commandments of god you're able to see the truth Okay, it's like a spiritual 
blindness that has been removed once you start keeping the commandments. It's a spiritual sign. Okay, this is the mark of the Most High. If you're keeping his commandments, you have the mark of God. Okay, let's keep going. We're going to keep on confirming this. Let's go to Exodus 31. Exodus 31. Exodus 31. Okay, and we're going to go to verse 13. And it reads, Exodus 31 and verse 13. We're going to start there. Speak thou also unto the children of Israel. Okay, you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. You are the true Israelites. It's not the Jews that are in Israel right now. Hold on a quick. Devil's a liar. So now, there are not the Jew, the Jews that are in Israel right now are not the real Jews. Okay, it's you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Because why? Because there's 12 tribes, okay, of the children of Israel. There's only one tribe over there. Okay, when you do history about the Jews out there, they don't line up with scripture. Okay, so you do your own homework on that. All right. So now, I'm going to keep going. Verse 13. Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbaths ye shall keep. For it is a sign, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that doeth sanctify you. So when you keep his Sabbaths, it's a spiritual sign. This is the mark of the Most High. So when you do the Sabbath day, okay, that's Friday sundown and Saturday to Saturday sundown, you are spiritually marked by the Most High, okay? And also it says Sabbath with an S in verse 13. So when you do his holy days, okay, you are also marked by the Most High. Meaning he's sanctifying you. He's separating you from other people. You have a protection on you. <clears throat> now verse 14. You shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it, is, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. Okay, so now, back in the Old Testament, under Moses, we would be put to death. But now under Yeshua or Jesus Christ, we have grace to get it right. Okay, you can't be put to death. Okay, but you can be spiritually put to death as far as having Satan's mark. And I'm going to show you guys that further in these scriptures. Okay, <clears throat> it says, for whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Okay, verse 15. Six days may work be done, but in the Sabbath, or, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. Holy to the Lord, whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Therefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generation. For a perpetual covenant. How long is perpetual? It's forever. Okay, the Most High changes not. We must keep the Sabbath to have this sign upon us. All right, and, and I'm going to keep going. Verse 17. It is a sign. You see that? It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. How long is forever? Okay. We're still living. So that means it's still standing. It says, For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Okay? <clears throat> so now that's, that's three witnesses. That's all talking about the sign of God. All right? We're going to keep going. 
Let's get a couple more witnesses or precepts. Let's go to it. Let's go to Ezekiel. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel. Book of Ezekiel. It's right after Jeremiah. Ezekiel chapter 20. And we're going to start at verse 12. Ezekiel 20 and 12. I'm going to wait for you. Okay, and it reads, Moreover also, I give them my Sabbaths to be a sign. To be a what? To be a sign. Between me and them, that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctified them. See, when you keep this, the Sabbaths, he puts a sign on you, or a mark, to sanctify you. What, what does sanctify mean? It means to make you holy, to separate you from other people that are not keeping the Sabbath day. Okay, now we're going to go to 19 and 20. I am the Lord, your God. Walk in my statutes and keep my judgments and do them. Verse 20, and hollow my Sabbaths and they shall be a sign between me and you again. We got about like three or five, six, seven witnesses now. It is a sign. When you keep the Sabbath, it is a sign between me and you that ye know, may know that I am the Lord your God. So now the sign is also to make you aware of what God you serve. Okay. If you're not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, you're serving another God. You can be like, oh, okay. Um, for example, worshiping idols. That's the second commandment. Thou shalt not worship any graven image. So if you see a religion out there that has a, a symbol that represents their faith, they're walking in the, in the way of another God. Because the Most High told us not to have graven images. That's how you know. You'll be aware of what is going on. All right? Let's keep going. We're going to go to Exodus 13. Let's keep going. Exodus 13. Exodus 13. Exodus 13. And we're going to read 15 and 16. And this is talking about uh, when the children of Israel were in Egypt. All right. And it says, verse 15, and it came to pass when Pharaoh would hardly let us go, that the Lord slew all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of men and the firstborn of beast. Therefore, I, sanctif I sacrifice to the Lord all that open the matrix, being males. But all the firstborn of my children I redeem. Verse 16. And it shall be for a token. Okay, token also represents sign. All right, look it up. And it shall be for a sign or a token upon thy hand. And for frontlets or forehead, between thy eyes for by strength of hand the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt okay so when the, the children of Israel got the blood of the lamb and put it on their do doorpost when the death angel came in okay this also represents the sign spiritually Okay, the death angel came in and they all, all the firstborn stayed alive. They had the blood over them. So when you keep the commandments of God, it's the same thing. You have the blood on you. Because why? I'm going to show you. Let's get John 14, 15. We're going to go into the New Testament now. John 14 and 15. John 14 and 15. This is, this is Christ's words. 
John 14 and 15. <clears throat> John 14, 15. This is the red letters. If ye shall shall ask any thing in my name, and I will do it. Okay, 14, 14, sorry. Now we're going to go to 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Okay, so exactly what the Old Testament is saying about the commandments. Christ said it right here. Okay, Christ said it himself. Now we can also go to verse 21 to get another witness. He that keepeth my commandments and keepeth them, it is he is, is that I love that love me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him, and will manifest manifest myself to him. That's the second witness saying the same thing about the commandments. That sign is going to be placed on your life. Let's get a third witness. Let's go to the book of John. John chapter, I mean, 1 John chapter 5 and verse 3. Okay. And it says, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. That's your third witness in the New Testament. And I got plenty of more. Okay, but this is all referencing keeping the commandments of God. And when you keep the commandments of God, you have the mark of God on your life. Okay, so now let's go to, let's go to Daniels. We're going to go to Daniels 7 and 25. Daniels 7 and 25. The book of Daniels. Now, we're talking about the Sabbath, which is the seventh day of the week, which is Friday sundown and Saturday sundown. We're talking about the commandments of God. All right. So now, when you read the book of Daniel's chapter seven, it talks about four beasts. And the fourth beast, which was the Roman Empire. And if you do history about the Roman Empire in 325 AD, Constantine changed the Sabbath to, to from Saturday to Sunday, okay? He changed it from the seventh day to the first day. Check your calendar, okay? Because the first day is Sunday and the seventh day is Saturday, all right? And this is recorded in the Bible. So we're going to read Daniel 7 and 25, and it reads, And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. Change times and laws. Okay, biblically, they change the biblical calendar into the Gregorian calendar. Okay, that's, that's talking about the times. And now, Constantine, back in 325 AD, they changed the Sabbath day, which was the law of God. This is recorded in the Bible. Let me read that one more time. And it shall, and he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given unto the his hands until a time and times and the dividing of time. Okay, they changed the laws of God according to history and according to biblical biblical history okay why would they do this why would they do this it's simple to remove the spiritual mark of god on your life okay because we were going over scriptures and you see <clears throat> when you keep the commandments of god you have a spiritual sign on your life which is the mark of the most high all right now Let's see spiritually who was working with the Romans. Okay, let's go to Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14 and verse, we're going to start at verse 12. 
and it reads, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Who is Lucifer? The devil, right? Because he's foul from heaven. The Bible is saying, how, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? And listen to this, verse 13. For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the side of the north. So he's going to be sitting in the mount of the congregation in the side of the north? What's a congregation? A congregation is a church, right? Verse 14. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. I will be like the Most High. And that's key right there. How are you, How is the devil going to be like the Most High? Okay, I'm going to give you an example. If the Most High, <clears throat> excuse me, if the Most High has a day of worship, which is the Sabbath day, what is the devil going to have? He gonna have a day of worship too, which is Sunday. This is where it all started. If the Most High has holy days, the devil gonna have holidays, right? If the Most High has um, a tabernacles, the devil gonna have a tabernacles. Okay, that's why you got witchcraft and all that. They have their own tabernacles. So. The main mission of the devil, it says, verse 14, and I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high, brothers and sisters. So if the most high has a mark, I mean, if, if yeah, if the most high has a spiritual mark, the devil will also gonna have a mark of his own also. And we're going to get into that because the devil always mimics the most high in everything. So now we're going to go over Satan's mark. Now. Let's go to Revelations chapter 13. Revelations chapter 13. Revelations chapter 13. And we're going to start at verse 14. No, actually, yeah, let's start at verse 14. So Revelations 13 and 14. This is the mark of Satan. And it says, verse 14, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles, which he had power to do to do in the sight of the beast. Okay. So so somebody has deceived the earth by the means of those miracles okay when you go into the uh, into the Greek and look up what miracles is a miracle is a sign and a token or a miracle that's what the words that's what the words give you or right, when you break down that definition it's miracle sign and token okay remember the Most High has a sign, and so does Satan have a sign. Okay, and the, the, the Greek number is 4592. All right. So now let's go ahead and read that one more time. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means or signs or tokens or miracles, by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast saying to them that dwell on the earth okay the beast which represents the last beast which is the roman empire okay it says saying to them that dwell on the earth they should make an image to the beast okay and this was representing the catholic church the image of the beast is the white jesus christ okay christ is not white Christ was a was a black man. All right. So they made that and do history on that image. You will find out that the image that they use.
came from a man named Caesar Bogier. All right. And it says, so they made an image to the beast, which had the wound by the sword and did live. Okay, that was Rome. Okay, and when Rome fell in the Dark Ages, the Dark Ages came, okay, they came back during the 14th, 15th century, okay? Verse 15, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Okay, that goes the image of the beast. Give power, give life unto the image of the beast. They said the image of the beast was Jesus Christ. That's how they gave life to it. All right. That the image of the beast should both speak. All right. To both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So back in during the Christopher Columbus, when they came to America, they came with Jesus Christ. Okay. The white image. And they told the people that if they don't, this is all history. They told the people if they don't worship this image, they should be killed. Okay. The people that were already here, they didn't know anything about a white Jesus Christ. Okay. They didn't know nothing about that. They, 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 were, they, they were already serving the true God. Some of them were. Some of them weren't. Okay. But this is what happened. Okay. Now verse 16. And he caused all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand. Okay, so when we looked up earlier, when you look up, up in the Hebrew, God has a left hand. What does the devil have? He has the right hand. Okay, and it's talking about a mark or a sign. Or in their forehead. Okay, all the scripture we went over earlier. Satan's trying to be like the most high. That's what he's doing. Okay. Let me read that one more time. And he caused all, both small and great, rich or poor, free or bond, to receive a mark on their hand and on their forehead. Okay. This is a spiritual mark. And I wanted to look a word up. Okay. When you go into the Greek, okay, in verse 16 of this chapter, when you look up the word, cause when it says he and he causeth when you look up that word okay on your e sword and it's uh g number 4160 you're gonna find the word transgress the law when you look that word up so when it says and he causeth he causes what Look up that word, and this is an, an, and it's going to say, transgress the law. So when you transgress the law of God, meaning not keeping the laws of God, you have Satan's mark. You have it either on your right hand, spiritually, or in your forehead. Okay? If you're not keeping the Sabbath day holy, you have Satan's mark. According to scripture. According when you break down this word. Okay? <clears throat> now let's go to verse 17. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the number of the beast or the number of his name. Okay, so this is also a physical mark. You ain't going to be able to buy or sell. Okay, but to know that you are under the Most High's protection if you're keeping the Most High's law, statutes, and commandments. And, if, and you have the most highs marked spiritually. But if you don't, if you're not keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, you have the Satan's mark spiritually already. You already have the mark of the beast spiritually. Verse 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that has understanding, let him that has understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. For it is a number of a man. When you look up man in the Greek, four, and it's number 444, it says to, dis, to distinction, to dis, distinguish man from being of a different order. That's what it gives you. Okay? Of a different order. 
meaning you're not in the most high's order. You're in Satan's order. And it says, for it is the number of a man and his number is six hundred three score and six, which is six, six, six brothers and sisters. So I wanted to come out with this lesson, this understanding from the mark of the most high and the mark of Satan. So if you are keeping the law, statutes and commandments, you have the, the mark of the most high on you spiritually. And if you're not keeping the law, statutes and commandments, you have Satan's mark spiritually. All right, brothers and sisters, this is Brother Quadash from One Nation, One Power. I just want to say Shalom, brothers and sisters. And may the Most High bless you. In Yeshua's name, so be it.